Hey guys, we're gonna talk about Rafiki. Rafiki is a film from Kenya. What we're gonna talk about in this video is when is it okay to retell a story that's been told a thousand times? Yeah, I don't, don't know what to say. Like, I mean, with Rafiki, you've got very familiar themes. You've got um, two children of rival families, in this case, rival politicians in Kenya. Uh, they fall in love with each other. You've got kind of that forbidden fruit aspect to it. You have the political aspect to it. And a lot of people are gonna jump in and say, you know, Romeo and Juliet, Shakespeare did it. It's been done a thousand times. What makes this so interesting? What makes this different? And I think a lot of times when you're writing a story, um, there is a kernel of truth to the notion that every story has already been written. The biggest question is when are you saying something significant enough that it's worth retelling that story? Rafiki's a really interesting case. I know that when we saw the trailer, I wasn't that interested in the movie just because I, I kind of picked up on some of those concerns early on that a lot of it seemed very familiar and it's, it's not typically the kind of movie that I'd be interested in. So it's one of those movies that, again, why I love a film festival, I probably would not have seen by myself, um, but because it was available, because I already was going to the film festival, I, I took some time out to go see it. What makes Rafiki so interesting and why it's worthwhile for them to tell this kind of classic story all over again is there are a few different elements thrown into it that really distinguish it from other similar stories. One is that the children of the politicians in this case are both women. So it's uh, a lesbian story in a country where it's still a crime to be a lesbian. And one of the things that I think is really important about a story like this is when everything really revolves around a, a relationship, if those characters in that relationship um, are ill-defined, if I don't really buy into the relationship, or if I don't really think that it's a significant relationship, if it, if it doesn't click with me, if it's not, if it's not well developed, I should have just stopped at that point. Then it's really easy for me to say like, you know, ah, these stupid kids, or it's, it's bad decision making, or you know, it, it, it's really easy to turn on that relationship when it just feels like there's there's there, it's it's drama for the sake of drama or drama in that way that only teenagers can have drama. So what this film really is, is it is a story about that relationship. And unlike most films I've seen that have these similar plot elements, it's a very strong relationship. It's fantastically well acted. Um, the writing develops their relationship in a way that while you kind of know from the beginning where it's leading, it, it feels very organic and it's very enjoyable. And the reactions of a lot of the people in their town and the behavior of a lot of the characters feels very organic, it feels very natural, and it's not as black and white as I think some films um, have a tendency to make the drama in the fallout of, of a revelation of such a scandalous affair. You do have characters that react very negatively and very judgmentally, but you also have characters that have more complex and nuanced reactions to it, and that's, for me, a lot more engaging to watch than seeing you know, these characters just get beat up on um, verbally and otherwise for an hour. The only comment I'd have about Rafiki that would be negative is there were some moments where it has some of the, and, and I, I don't say this lightly, some of the worst editing and continuity errors that I've probably ever seen. Um, just some things that are kind of blatant and, and just really pulled me out. I mean. There's a, there's a sequence where there's a lot of rain, it's a, like a torrential downpour, and the, the two main characters uh, escape to a van. And when they get inside, it's, it doesn't appear to be raining, and they're as dry as can be. Um, and there's other sequences where um, I think they try to do like a neat editing technique where one of them is staring at the other, and you hear them talking, and there's a quick cut to maybe infer that you know, what you're hearing them say isn't happening at the exact same moment, like they're lost kind of in thought as they're staring. But then there's moments where a character will be clearly talking and their lips are moving, but it's the wrong dialogue paired up with it. So it might have been a stylistic choice. If it was, it was an ineffective one to me. But outside of that, for the most part, it's a really well-handled film in terms of cinematography, 
Um, the lo the locale is beautiful. Um, the characters are really interesting, and it makes you feel rewarded for sitting through a story that you might, at the outset, feel like you've seen a hundred times before. So. Um, Rafiki is one of the movies at La Film Fest that surprised me and I couldn't recommend highly enough.